What's going on? You better say bye to the beard. It's going away soon. <laughs> Getting a haircut next weekend because this is just haggard. I haven't been able to do it with the stupid Corona shit going on. So uh, yeah, when I get a haircut, I'm shaving too. So say bye bye, bye bye. So sales, how do you actually get people to sign up? I get asked that all the time. I get asked a lot of stuff all the time, but that's definitely in the top, uh, top five. Sales, door to door sales. You go knock on people's doors and you say, hey, want some internet? <laughs> A little bit more to it than that, obviously, but um, it's not rocket science. <laughs> it's one of those things you just got to go do. Yeah, you got to have a website. You can do marketing stuff. You can run ads on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Sure, that does work, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have to sell or pay somebody to sell for you. One way or another, sales is necessary, even though it's kind of a dirty word, especially door-to-door -door sales. You want to run people off, mention door-to-door -door sales, and they go, oh no, door-to-door -door is not necessarily a bad thing. And I have some really, really good tips for you as far as how to do that successfully. First, who here knows who Jordan Belfort is? I see that hand in the back. Yeah, you? Who is it? That's right. That's the Wolf of Wall Street. He's a real guy. <laughs> that's one of my all-time favorite movies. It is fantastic. I don't even remember why I watched it, but I watched it and after it was over, I was like, good God, that was insane. And I started kind of digging around a little bit. And yeah, that entire movie is true. <laughs> More or less, everything in that movie actually happened. Getting arrested for crashing his car all jacked up on Quaaludes. The sinking of the yacht. But I will tell you, the yacht story, there are some lessons yes. to be learned. <laughs> the vast majority of the movie actually happened. It's crazy. Fantastic movie. But that aside, he's actually a very good salesman. Um, he has a YouTube channel now. He's released a couple books. Aside from the... Um, the Wolf of Wall Street book, of course, he has one teaching his straight line sales method. It's actually pretty good. That's what I use when I go door to door selling internet. So get the book. If you don't have it, get it. Get it on um, Audible and he'll read it to you. It's actually kind of cool. The number one piece of advice that I have is make yourself non-threatening. The vast majority of the time when somebody opens the door, the first thing in their mind at the very, very front is who the hell is this and why the hell are they here? So you need to squash that shit real quick because they're like, God, they're going to try to sell me some bullshit I don't want or need. I don't want this shit. Go away, which is what we don't want. So the first thing out of my mouth every time they open the door is, hey, my name is Brent. I live over on my cross streets. Letting them know that, hey, I'm not just some random ass dude. I'm their freaking neighbor because I am. <laughs> then I say something along the lines of I created a Internet company for everybody down here. Uh, got a second to chat. Something like that. Real casual, real off the cuff. Um, almost trying to act like I'm ready to go already. <laughs> like I'm expecting them to say no. I, I find that sometimes that kind of piques their interest a little, their curiosity, like, what is this guy doing? It kind of throws them off a little bit. Usually they'll be like, oh yeah, sure, why not? Then go into your, your spiel. He, he calls them scripts and yeah, I mean, basically. Give it some forethought. It doesn't have to be something that you actually write down and like memorize and all that, but give it some thought beforehand. What I say probably won't apply to all of you, but something along the lines of, um, I know down here there are no good internet options, so I built one for us. I give real internet that's not limited like satellite and it actually works unlike CenturyLink. Something along those lines. Usually they'll be like, what does it cost? Um, he, he talks about objections in the book how to deal with people trying to veer off into Mars or Uranus, as he, as he says. And yeah, they will try to do that. They'll try to deflect and, and dodge and kind of get around talking to you in general. So you got to be quick with it. Um, not overly quick. It's hard to describe. He talks about gaining trust, uh, being a expert in your field, uh, that kind of stuff. And it's very, very true. The quicker and the more effectively you can do that, and uh, that kind of comes from knowing what you're talking about, knowing, uh, being well-spoken, looking presentable, that kind of stuff. The, the quicker you can do that, the more successful you'll be at this. You'll get less objections then. But nine times out of 10, they'll have an objection or something anyway, even if it's something small like, oh, well, how much is it? Uh, easy, simple, quick answer for that. You know, there's an install fee, includes your first month. After that, it's 55 bucks a month for 25 megs. And it's an actual 25 megs, not up to like the other guys do. If you don't see 20 to 25 megs all the time, let me know. 
Something like that, real quick. And then the one thing that people hate to do when it comes to sales is they ask for the sale. Don't be like, so are you ready to buy now? Or, hey, you're gonna cut me that check. Don't, don't, don't do that. That would be stupid. He actually uses the phrase, um, something along the lines of, give it a shot and you'll wish you did it sooner. Something like that. And it actually works pretty damn well. So I'll end up saying something along those lines. Hey, if you wanna give it a shot, I can get you hooked up. I got my installer on the, on the hook, he's ready to go. Uh, this weekend, next week, you know, whatever date or time frame or whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. We can get you hooked up, and if you don't like it, I'll come take it down. Just like that. That's it. That's all you got to do. I I don't think I've had anybody tell me no. Um, a lot of my subscribers are from word of mouth, so I really haven't had to do a ton of door-to-door, -door, but the door-to-door -door sales that I have done, I don't think anybody... Or no, there was one guy, and his situation was interesting. Hmm. <laughs> He was living in an RV behind his house and his wife was in the house. Uh, I was like, okay, um, awkward. Hmm. Apparently they were going through some shit. Uh, he did say he wanted it, but he said I had to come back because they're, he's building a office or something behind the house and you know, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I, I kind of just bowed out of that one. I'm like, okay, you, you I'll be back later. <laughs> I'm not even worried about it. People are going to say no, it's no big deal. And when you first go up to the door and they first open the door and you're like, hey, I live over here, you, you got a second to chat. If they say no, leave. Like, don't waste your time, leave. <laughs> you can't force somebody to buy something. You got to kind of get the little pre qualifiers out of the way. That's why I always ask, you know, do you have internet? Um, do you like it? Th those kind of questions like that, because in my area, not only is it an easy in, because there is no internet down here anyway, so odds are they're going to be like either I don't have it or it sucks. <laughs> the majority of the time it's one of those. So that's an easy in. But if I didn't ask that and I just started talking about internet, what if they already had internet they like? Or what if they don't use it at all? Or something like that. They'll tell you. Like when you say, hey, um, you have a second to chat about internet, you'll know pretty quick if they don't give a shit. <laughs> They'll be like, uh, yeah, I, I tether my phone or um, my son uses it, I don't care. Something like that. Or if they're an older, uh, there's some neighbors of mine that are a bit older and I know they don't use internet. I know they don't care about it. So I'm not gonna waste a bunch of my time and their time trying to sell them something that they don't want or need. And that's the biggest thing with sales. You're a sleaze bag if you're trying to sell something to somebody that they don't want or need. Sales doesn't have to be like that. Sales is, it, well, it should be anyway, Trying to fulfill somebody's need, like if they need, in this case, internet, your goal should be to help them, <laughs> to bring them something they can use. And if you're actually doing that, if you're genuine, you'll be very successful at sales. And sales, you can make a lot of money in sales. Uh, aside from this even, if you're trying to go out and get a, a job or you wanna try something a little different, the commission sales jobs, you, you can make a lot of money doing it if you're good. But you gotta be genuine, you gotta actually try to help people. And that's really the whole trick. It's not even really a trick, it should be common sense, but I think it's something that a lot of people don't think about. Jordan Belfort talks about it in his book, and it's very true. Um, you, you Don't be a sleaze bag, and people will be less apt to kick you off their porch. <laughs> so main takeaways. Um, diffuse the, well, how can I word that? Disarm them. <laughs> like when you, when they first open the door, you need to let them know that you're not some sleazy bastard there to try to sell them something, even though you are trying to sell something technically. You're not going to be one of those guys and be high pressure and be a sleaze bag. Let them know that, hey, you're local to the area. I'm just passing through. I'm your neighbor. Whatever works for you, find something like that that makes them go, oh, okay, all right. Then ask them if they have a minute to chat, to talk. If they say no or they hesitate, say no problem. Maybe even offer to come back later. You got to kind of read the people. Some people just flat out don't give a shit and don't want to talk to you ever at all, ever about anything ever. And that's fine. You're not going to sell them anything anyway. So out you go. Don't even waste your time. After that, do your little prepared speech, your, uh, your script. I live over here. I noticed when I moved in, there was no internet, blah, blah. However, whatever you create that fits your situation, because your situation is bound to be different than mine. Whatever it is, Away you go. As soon as you, you ask them if they have some time to chat, away you go. Then when they reply, you're going to have to kind of read them a little bit and see what, where they're at and what they're thinking. You, you'll know. 
if they're if they have a hang up about something you'll know you'll know what it is a common one down here is oh well we already have internet through whoever i need to see if i can uh, cancel my um my contract or whatever get out of my contract okay no problem depending on what it is like HughesNet down here for instance um i know a couple of my subscribers left HughesNet. they got out I don't know exactly how they did it, but I do know that if a service is not what you, it's like cell phone service, for instance, if, if your phone never works or it doesn't work in your house or whatever, they have to let you out of the contract. They can't keep you in a contract for a service that you can't use. There may be some legality stuff behind it. There may be some hoops you have to jump through or something, but if you raise enough shit, you can, you can probably get out of just about any contract you want, really regarding this kind of stuff, at least anyway. I'm not talking about like leases and stuff. Those are a bit trickier. But whatever their objections are, kind of help them through it. And then ask for the sale. <laughs> hey, how about I get you hooked up this weekend? If you don't like it, I'll come take it down. Something like that. Easy, to the point, non-threatening, kind of nonchalant even. Most of the time they'll say, okay, good to go. If you did your other steps correctly. Disarming them and, and qualifying them and everything else. Because if you ask, hey, how about I get you set up this week to somebody that doesn't use the internet? Obviously, they're going to be like, uh, no. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. It's, it's really that easy. The hardest part about door-to-door -door sales is doing it. It's kind of a, uh, almost a stage fright kind of thing for some people. Or like public speaking. People say that the number one phobia amongst people is um, public speaking or talking in front of large groups or, you know, whatever. And that's kind of what this is, sort of, not really. I think it freaks people out in a very similar kind of way. But once you get over that, it's really not that hard, especially now that you know a couple little tricks. Seriously, get Jordan's book on Audible, especially because he reads it to you and he's hilarious. But get the book and, and read it. <laughs> it's not really reading when you're listening to it, I guess, but it's really good. And it does have a lot of really good pointers in there. Uh, follow them and you'll be successful at sales. I mean, you really will. But that's it. Questions, comments, leave them down below. Um, affiliate links are in the description and a link to join the discord is in the description. So be sure to join too, but that's it for now. Later.